Value-based care is common in primary care, but remains rare in specialties such as obstetrics. I'm Andy Reynolds with NCQA. Today on Quality Matters, we hear about an award-winning program that could change all that, the Elevance Health Obstetrics Practice Consultants Program. I spoke with the program's director. Hi, Andy. I'm Tiffany Inglis. I'm a physician, I'm OBGYN by training, and I started working in Ohio. I practiced for about 15 years, and I now work at Carillon Health as the National Medical Director for Women's and Children's Health. Carillon is part of Elevance Health, and Elevance knows a lot about pregnancy and childbirth in the United States. Tell us about that, please. At Elevance Health, we care for about 12% of the nation's births. It's about one in every eight babies born. A little less than 50% are Medicaid deliveries and a little more than 50% are commercial. So it's a lot of babies. I imagine at that scale, you see and learn a lot. How do you think about quality improvement when you're dealing with such large numbers? When we think about the opportunity that that affords, we're we're looking at about around 500,000 births, depending on the year. And so really been focused on how do we, with that volume and scale, think about improving outcomes. We need to be addressing racial disparities. We need to be addressing that not all all moms live in places where they have access to care, so those maternity deserts. My goals of getting into this work is what works to fix these things? And then how do we scale that in the one in eight births, 12% of the births? How do I scale things that are working and make sure we're getting them to everyone as quickly as possible. Can you explain the origins and the purpose of your program, please? Provider enablement is the blanket term. The team are called OB practice consultants. It's a group of clinicians, nurses for the most part, who work together to support providers. The person on our side has very much a clear line of sight into all of the member programs and options that they have available to them. They are linked to the plan. But they are the point of contact for the OBGYN or midwife and really the point of contact for their staff to be able to say they need something. We align a person to these providers to be the touch point, share data on outcomes, C-sections, preterm birth rates, who still needs to get a postpartum visit, but also then have the providers say, I'm taking care of Andy and he really needs X, Y, Z. Does he have a benefit for that? How do I get him that support? So OB practice consultants are the practitioner's coach or go-to inside the health plan. How does all this relate to value-based care? Over time, we've partnered with our value-based care team, and they are also the person that helps support our value-based care providers. They don't have to be in a value-based care contract to get the support from the practice consultants, but when they are in that relationship, they get deeper data, deeper knowledge that can help close care gaps, make sure patients get care they need, make sure patients get services available that maybe the the doc doesn't know they have. We're working within our value-based care solutions across the lines of business and making sure that both value-based care aligned physicians and not aligned are getting the support from this team. And then the other role we play is that then as we approach providers about being in value-based care, this team is really that front line that can help recruit and answer questions. Can you tell us how the program has changed? Elevance Health launched the Obstetrics Practice Consultant Program 2015 with one person for a couple of years. Now we're at almost 40. What we started with when we were a smaller team was focused around Medicaid Until 22, that was our only focus. We expanded the program to start supporting our commercial deliveries. We are working with the same docs because most OBGYNs are delivering babies that are Medicaid members and commercial members. Okay, so substantial growth. What about your impact? When we created the offering, we really didn't know if it would work. It's different than anything else we ever offered. Our providers are terribly happy with the program, 95% the happiness from our providers. And the program has grown not only because people like it, but because this has driven huge changes, a significant improvement in low birth weight babies. It's 20% in our recent evaluation. 20% fewer low birth weight babies were born, but 12% reduction in preterm birth. Those are big numbers. And 
a significant improvement in prenatal visit compliance, postpartum visit compliance. The thing that's been most eye-opening is we can really impact outcomes. This has been our biggest lever. I asked other people at NCQA to relate Tiffany's program to other quality improvement projects. Hello, I'm Karen Shears. I am Vice President for Quality Sciences in our Quality Measurement Research Group at NCQA. Dr. Inglis and people like her who are innovating in care model delivery are essential to the transformation that we want in healthcare. Everybody has a bottom line and a mandate towards sustainability, whether you're a payer, a provider, and even a patient who's bearing out-of-pocket costs. I enjoyed that the description of the program, which is a mix of understanding accountability and resourcing. The way this ties into what we're trying to do at NCQA, our program around uh, birthing is called the Birth Equity and Accountability Measurement Program. We don't call it a maternal program. We call it a birth equity program. We do that purposefully because the equity framework demands consideration of the whole person, that interplay among medical conditions, behavioral health, social circumstances, uh, geographic circumstances, care delivery limitations. We think about all these things in an equity model. The other aspect of equity that applies is a rising tide does not lift all boats in achieving good birth outcomes in prenatal, birthing, and postnatal, people will go through that and have no complications, have basically a normal life experience that includes bringing a new life into the world. Only a small population will have difficulty. So we put an equity frame on the demand to understand who are vulnerable and to target an accountability framework around supporting those people. And then finally, this idea of data maturity. Do we have the right data? This is a prominent aspect of quality science around health equity. Are we using the right data to demonstrate both to people using care and the care delivery system, what the risk is and how it can be mitigated? We are maturing data to do that more effectively as a healthcare ecosystem. All of those reasons are why we frame this program in the full context of birth equity. Elevance's Obstetrics Practice Consultant Program has won an NCQA Health Innovation Award, and my colleagues who reviewed the program were impressed that you've emphasized network enablement rather than network oversight and control. What can you tell us about enablement versus oversight and control? I love that's what they loved because I agree. By supporting networks and providers and helping them to reach patients, we are building trust. Instead of thinking about it as controlling them or managing them, it's how can we help you do your job better? They can provide better care if they feel like they can get help. That enablement It's really about making sure that they have the resources, tools, and understanding to do the things that they are trying to do, which is provide good obstetric care, deliver a healthy baby to a healthy mom. Tiffany, what has surprised you about this program? I was surprised how much this team has been able to support provider knowledge around value-based care. A lot of Docs and midwives who just don't know what that means. Right? We've all heard the terms, but what does it mean? Everything in healthcare, we love our words. We love names. We love acronyms. I always said medical school was the most expensive vocabulary lesson I'll ever have. But when you think about words, what does value-based care really mean? Traditionally, it's been primary care focused. OBGYN, it was a newer phenomenon. And to some, it's still fairly a new concept. There is an element of distrust in the medical community between plans and providers, hospitals and plans, providers and hospitals. Some of it is they think it's another way to limit their payment. And as an OBGYN, you are doing about 10 months to a year of work for this delivery, which you will get paid for. They want to understand what does it mean? Does it mean I will see different payments? Does it mean payments will come at different times? 
What does it mean, right? As you're running this business of their practice, just getting specific. Here's what it would mean to you. Here's how it would start. Here's how it would look. Here's the reporting that we could give back to you to help you to know that Tiffany needs her postpartum visit still. These providers are very busy. And so really it ties them to resources like reporting or a human being to contact and all these other things that they don't have day to day. And then how do I make sure that if I'm doing something, it's being captured? Because oftentimes it's happening. It's just not being documented. The biggest thing is the administrative stuff, the how, the when, and the where. And once you can make them comfortable with that, and you can sort of show that it's going to amplify the fact that you're providing evidence-based care, and it's going to drive you to do that at greater scale, then they're all like, oh, well, that's what I practice. Sure, right? And it, it's sort of like this light goes on. That's interesting. It sounds like practitioners are more aligned with value-based care and are okay with value-based care more than they realize. Overwhelmingly, we see providers be like, well, I do all that. So it's just getting that shift. We've been in fee-for-service for so long. It's getting that culture of change mentality of, right, you do. The other thing that's probably enlightening for them is we have the same goals. We all want better care and better outcomes. We just have to figure out how to get there together. And so when you can break down that wall, it makes it easier to have that trusting conversation where maybe I've never worked with you. You don't know me. You don't know what my intentions are. That's having the honest conversation about we want to improve care together and we believe value-based care gets us there. So let's reinforce evidence-based care. Let's get these improved outcomes. Let's increase patients' access to care. Make sure they're getting in for visits. Let's drive down preterm birth rates. Let's reduce C-sections and really help them understand that they're doing all the hard work, taking good care of patients or, hey, why don't you add this? And you could have even better outcomes because docs who added this, they've seen a reduced preterm birth or C-section rate or whatever it may be. And then when they contract for that value-based care, they already have a deep understanding of what to expect. What advice would you have for people who are interested in the idea of value-based care, but agree with you that the wording is a problem? How do you think advocates of value-based care should talk about value-based care? Be specific, give examples. Other thing that we should all be pushing for value-based care is how can we use real-time data to get us to the right spot? It's hard to look at an obstetrician and say, well, your C-section rate from 18 months ago wasn't any good. What are they going to do? The other thing I've learned, and I, this is coming from a provider seat as much as anything, don't be afraid to ask questions. I don't ever mind answering questions about what do I mean by that. I, I always said to my patients, I don't mind if you go get a second opinion. I want you to get the best care. If, if you want a second opinion, get a second opinion. If you want to ask a question, ask a question. Being free to say, I don't understand what that means. Can you explain it better? Is okay, especially in a friendly way. There's a nice way to say that. <laughs> the key there is don't be afraid to ask. Let's bottom line this program. What have you learned that people listening might be able to apply where they work? For me, the surprise has been the impact you can have by taking this approach of value-based care tied to quality and then aligning it to provider supports. The member gets better care. The provider gets their value-based care contract stuff taken care of. And the plan gets a better outcome for mom and baby a triple win. It's a good outcome for everyone. And I think the thing that caught me most off guard was just the scale at which we can improve outcomes and see better care. This program alone can drive value. It drives improvement just by supporting providers. So if you don't have all of the parts, it's not a reason not to start and not to try. Now you add value-based care, which alone improves outcomes for mom and baby. When you put them together, it, it is an additive plus outcome. The practice consultants drive a, a set of value. So two plus two equals five. I would say each piece is important, but it is the execution together 
that gets us where we want to be. I think that's well put. Why don't we leave things there? Tiffany Inglis of Elevance, thank you for talking to us about the program that has won an NCQA Health Innovation Award, the Obstetrics Practice Consultant Program. Thank you for joining us on Quality Matters. Thank you, Andy. It's great to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Elevance Health and other NCQA Health Innovation Award winners will be honored at NCQA's Health Innovation Summit 2024 on October 31st in Nashville. Learn more about the summit at ncqa.org. Thank you for listening to Quality Matters. You can always learn more at ncqa.org and be sure to subscribe to Quality Matters wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next time.